Hello, sewing people of the internet. I frequently receive emails or messages from viewers asking my opinion about how much a particular sewing machine should sell for or whether a machine that they've found is uh, at a, a good price or a good deal. And uh, I just acquired some machines that kind of sparked this conversation and I thought maybe this would be a good time to talk about it. I do want to point out ahead of time, I am not an expert on anything. Uh, my opinion on what I think a particular sewing machine should or shouldn't sell for is based 100% on what I've seen scouring classifieds for probably 10 years now for sewing machines. Uh, and in the event that I know something about a machine, maybe, you know, what I know about how useful it is or how, you know, the quality that I perceive and stuff, what any used, no longer produced item is worth on the market is what someone is willing to pay for it. So if you have a Singer 201 and you can get $2,000 for it, then it's worth $2,000. I wouldn't pay you $2,000 for it, but um, since I have five or six of them now, I'd love for them to be worth $2,000. But in any event, uh, I'm gonna show you these machines that I just got, and then I'm gonna show you some uh, local classified ad stuff that I've seen uh, recently that kind of illustrate some of what I think the problem is. <clears throat> so, recently I was scouring the Facebook marketplace and I came upon an ad for these five utter pieces of junk. They're all great machines. Uh, some of these, in fact, if you haven't figured it out by now, there's a couple of real gems in there. Uh, the person who was offering these for sale had it listed uh, for $250 for the whole lot. And I'm not that great at math, but I think that brings it to $50 per machine. There's no planet on which any of these machines is worth $50. They're completely locked up. Um, let's see, most of yeah, that, that's not going anywhere. That's, I mean, I can't even get any movement out of that one. Um, they're maybe gonna be uh, parts machines. I'm gonna try to see if I can get any of these things loosened up, but there's really no hope. But what we have here is a Singer 401, a Singer 201. This is the actually the machine that I went there for or that I was interested in, this is a uh, FOF 130, and I'm only interested in this one because I have another one that I'm rebuilding, and in the event that I need some obscure spare part, at least it might be on this one. And then there's these three older singers that I don't even know, I don't even know the model numbers of these. My, my knowledge of old singer sewing machines, the old black machines pretty much extends to the 201, 1591, and the featherweight, so. If you happen to know what these are, post it in the comments below. Anyway, so I went to look at the machines and I told the person selling them, like, look, you know, I don't want to be the one to break the bad news to you, but these things are dead. There's nothing you can do with them. Um, and I basically offered her a paltry sum to take the two that I wanted. Uh, and she decided to, to hold out and see if somebody else wanted them. And I, I left her my information and said, listen, call me if you decide you're going to just throw them away when you realize that they're not worth anything. I'll at least come take them so they don't end up in the trash. And a couple weeks later, she sent me a text message and said, come get them. So I got them for free, which is, I mean, the gas I spent driving to get them was probably worth more than what these things are worth at the moment. But So the topic I'm trying to get around to eventually is that there's a reason why that person put a value of $250 on five rusted, locked up, completely destroyed sewing machines. And that's because nobody knows what these things are worth. And when you scour the, the ads, if you say, oh, I wanna sell my sewing machine, what's a sewing machine worth? You'll see just ridiculous prices sometimes. Um, we'll talk about that when we look at some of the ads that I wanna show you. And I guess my, my point of all this and, and cautionary statement is if you are shopping for a vintage sewing machine and you're not really certain about the machine, you know, for example, if you know you want a Singer 201-2 or a 1200, if you can find a 1200, like, you know, if a, if a featherweight's worth $500 now, I don't understand why a 1200 isn't a thousand dollar machine, but they're not. Um, but, you know, if you know you want a 1200 and you found the only one that you can find and you're willing to pay a lot of money for it, then 
you know, that's great. But if you're just, you know, buying a random sewing machine because you want to try sewing, there's no reason to spend $200 on a $25 machine. So let's look at a couple of ads that are uh, currently active in my area, and I'll give you my thoughts for what that's worth. Uh, this first one, and, and I chose this ad and the one that uh, we're also going to look at uh, immediately after on purpose. Um, there's no indication of the model, and there's a couple of models that look similar to this, but this looks like my 348. There's a couple of similar models. They're all, uh, I don't think there's a great difference between any of the ones. If it's not a 348, it's a, I don't know, 368, something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm not super duper familiar with that. But uh, this one, you know, it looks like what you would find at a garage sale or thrift store or whatever. It's not like some pristine museum piece or anything. And they're asking $120. Now, I was given my 348 and I like it. And mine's in really, really nice shape. You know, to me, it's a $50 machine at best. Like, I, you know, I wouldn't buy one. Like if I was, you know, walked into a thrift store and there was one for 25 bucks, I'm, you know, if I were looking for another machine for whatever reason, then it might interest me. But there's nothing about it that, again, for me and my sewing, uh, there's nothing about it that makes it particularly outstanding. I haven't used the one I have in months and months and months. Uh, so to me, $120 is a bit steep. So what's interesting is this other seems to be a 348 or again, one of the similar models that I don't know the, the model name of. The people who are selling it apparently don't know what model it is either or did not bother to list that information uh, for $125. And again, same same thing. It's just, you know, kind of dirty, old singer, whatever it is. Um, they're fine machines, don't get me wrong. Like if you need a vintage sewing machine of this type, um, there's nothing wrong with this machine, but not for 125 bucks to me. To me, again, you know, 35, 40 bucks, you know, really nice one, 50 bucks. But now if you have one of these and you're trying to sell it for $125, again, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying that I see lots of machines for $25 that are similar and there's no reason why I would pay this much for this machine, me personally. So... Let's move on to something completely different that's actually kind of shocking. Uh, so this is a Foff, and I don't think it says in the ad, I, I, don't, I just took snapshots and cut out a lot of stuff, but uh, I don't think it said, but this is a Foff 360. Pretty awesome sewing machine. I own one of these and a 260. Uh, this one is clearly not in great shape. Um, and again, I don't have the full ad, but I think it said something about the where the the foot pedal plugs in, needs some work or something, but it, that it functions. Uh, to me, $100 for this is a pretty darn good price. I paid $40 for mine and it was, it had the typical off stuck zigzag mechanism when I bought it. So um, I, honestly, I think $100 as an asking price is not a bad place to start. I probably would, you know, be looking to pay less depending on what I found when I, you know, looked at the machine. To me, that's that's a surprisingly sane price as an asking price. And by the way, I've tried to anonymize these ads to the extent that I can, but also leave enough information that if you're looking for something that you see in this video, and if you're seeing this around the time that it's posted, you could probably figure out how to find these things. But So let's look at an industrial machine. Now, it's been my experience that an industrial non-walking foot usually going to be, you know, $500 and less and usually a lot less. Um, and in fact, you can usually spot someone who doesn't really know what they have when they have a non-walking foot industrial machine that's not particularly in good shape and not particularly special, just, you know, old used machine. And they're trying to sell it for twelve or $1,300. They don't realize that it's not a walking foot machine and that there's a, a big difference in the value. But basically, it's been my experience that walking foot machines, you know, pretty much 500 and up, up to a lot more, and non-walking foot machines, you know, under 500, usually like 200 is what I kind of see them for asking prices. I don't even know what they sell for. Um, I don't find non-walking foot industrial machines to be particularly useful for what I do, uh, but you might. In any case, this is an Adler, which is a you know very well-respected German brand. 
walking foot industrial machine that looks like it's working. I, I think if I remember again, I don't have the ad copy in front of me, but I think it was working. They're asking three hundred dollars. Like, I I think they got it the other way. They didn't realize that this is a walking foot machine, and and they could probably get more money for it. Now there may be something I don't know about it that makes that a reasonable price, and, but. If I were looking for a walking foot machine today, I would be calling about that. That's a, that's a pretty good deal. So, and again, the point of this is that that person that's selling this machine, I, I'd be willing to bet, has no idea what they have. And is just like, ah, you know, I, prices range from this to this. It's kind of junky, you know, I'll try to get 300 bucks for it and move it. Um, so that's the kind of deal I would be looking for when shopping for machines is the, I don't know what I have, I'm not really sure what it's worth, and I'm just going to kind of go for a, a medium low price, and then I can maybe get it even less. But So this is a machine that I know well, and, and a lot of you will know. This is a Singer 201-2. Um, I often just say 201, and I know that can be confusing for those of you who are really into these. But um, this is not a very good picture, and, and this is a, an interesting ad to me because it... I think in other pictures in the ad, it actually shows the manual. So in the manual it says it's a 201. The thing about these old singers is they often don't have a model number on it. So 201 doesn't say 201 anywhere on it. And that can work out as an advantage for people like me who are looking for deals for these things because if someone has a 201, doesn't realize that it's possibly the greatest domestic sewing machine that was ever made, uh, then they see other black singer sewing machines listed for 25, 35 bucks. They sell it for 25, 35 bucks. Um, on the other hand, people who know what they are may tend to ask higher prices for them. This seems to be kind of a mishmash because I don't think they know what it is. Again, it's not listed in the ad that it's a 201, but they're asking $300 for it. Now, I think I paid 100 or 150 for my first 201. I, I got it in my head that I needed to have a 201. I also got it in my head that they were hard to find and I just needed to, you know, I found one and I bought it. I have like seven of them now, I think six, I can't remember, but I see them all the time, like all the time. Uh, and I don't live in an area that's really a uh, target rich environment for old sewing machines. So I have paid as little as $20. Uh, I think I've paid $50 for one, uh, well, I, I say I paid as little as $20, I, I paid as little as zero because that locked up one was free. Um, I bought another junk one for $10 just for parts. So $299 to me is insane, especially when at least looking at the picture, it's not in particularly good shape. The table's not anything special. It's, it's just, you know, Probably you could just sew with it and it would be great. Like, I think that might be a machine I would entertain paying $100 or $150 for if it, you know, if I sat down and it worked perfectly and I don't have to rewire it or anything. But $299, like, it would, for me, it would have to be perfect. Again, I hope I'm wrong and I hope I have some incredibly valuable machines now. But to me, that just seems like a high price. And in support of that, Let's look at this one. Now, again, I'm, I'm looking at one picture that's not particularly up close, but in this picture, at least, this 201 looks like it's in really beautiful condition. The table looks to be nicer. Same price, $300. Um, you know, again, I'd have to sit down and look at it and, and know more about it. I wouldn't pay $300. I wouldn't pay $300 for any 201 at this point. While they're incredible machines, they're readily available for less than this. And, you know, I, I just don't see any reason in paying this much for one. But if this one is as nice as that picture looks, at least there's an argument to be made that it's worth a, a higher price. Whereas the previous one, as far as I can tell, like that's a maybe $50 machine for me. So now this one is both a surprise and a good example of how not to advertise a machine or well, anything, I guess, but this black case that we're looking at, many of you would know immediately. I kind of had an immediate reaction to this, but this is a Sailrite LSZ1. And it looks like it's a pretty recent one. It's got the uh, updated 
stitch length and reverse lever. Um, it, it's got a monster wheel on it. Like, it's pretty attractive for $500 based on what I usually see them listed for. If I'm honest, I'm actually about to buy an LSZ1, and the only reason I'm not gonna call this person and buy it from them is I want the new one with the worker bee package, and so I'm just gonna buy it from Sailrite. But uh, that's a, if you're looking for an LSZ1 and you're anywhere in Florida and you're watching this anytime close to when I released it, you might wanna look for that. But again, it's I, from the, the text in the ad, it sounds like that the person listing it is listing it for his mom and like they didn't spend any time trying to make it apparent that they have a really good machine at a really good price. So I say the, the most interesting in terms of pricing confusion for last. I know nothing about this particular machine uh, so I, I can't give you an answer as to who's right here but this is interesting. So this is a Bernina industrial machine. I think it's an embroidery machine, uh, like a manual embroidery machine. Uh, it definitely has zigzag and it's definitely not a walking foot. Looks like it's a good shape, has a couple of extras, it has cams for the embroidery mechanism. Uh, they're asking $2,500. Now, I don't, I know Bernitas are awesome. Uh, I have a video about my experience with my first Bernina. Uh, you know, the quality is amazing, and I know that people who do that kind of embroidery might be willing to pay more for it. You know, there's there's a lot I don't know about this machine. So again, I don't know if $2,500 is an insanely high price, but I can tell you relative to, I mean, it's, it's way higher than anything I've paid for any industrial machine that I own. Um, I, I, it would have to wash my car and cook me dinner to be worth $2,500, but whatever. Here's why this is interesting. Uh, that's a Model 217, and I only know that because it's in the app. This Bernina, if it's not the exact same model, it's a very, very similar model that does the same thing. It's got the embroidery mechanism or whatever. Um, you know, maybe it's not in as good condition. It's hard to say from the pictures, but they're asking $500. Now, either this person is missing out on $2,000 that they could be making, or the other person has an insanely inflated idea of what their machine is worth. The reason this is possible is the same reason why I can't tell you who's right. There's not like a Kelly Blue Book of sewing machines that we can turn to and go, oh, well, it's Bernina Model 217, this condition, it's worth that much money. So the market will dictate. Somebody, you know, will either pay $2,500 for the, the expensive one or eventually they'll lower their price until somebody does buy it. Uh, you know, if, if the $500 one, it actually was posted uh, as of today, 23 days ago. So uh, it's apparently not something that people have alerts set for and are ready to pounce on when they see a good deal. Um, I don't know, but that's a, that's a big discrepancy in price. And that's really the point of this whole conversation. Vintage sewing machines, uh, used industrial sewing machines, they have great utility and they can be beautiful objects, especially the, the vintage domestic sewing machines. Uh, so they can be, you know, nice decorative items to have around. I prefer to use them uh, than to look at them, but I do have machines, you know, scattered around that, you know, could be considered decorative while I'm not using them. But it can be difficult to value them, and I think a lot of sellers who don't want the sewing machine, you know, inherited it, found it, whatever. Um, they tend to look at the highest priced item they can find on Craigslist that day that even looks similar and base their pricing on that. And that's just not a reliable way to price things. So I guess if someone were to press me for my advice, if you are selling a machine, then take a little bit of time and try to figure out what it is and what it generally sells for so that you can price it accordingly. Uh, you'll save yourself some frustration. Again, if you have a generic sewing machine and some dummy gives you $500 for it, well, good for you and good for me if the price of these things continues to skyrocket, that would be great. But 
I don't see that happening. Uh, and if you're looking to buy, more importantly, a, a vintage sewing machine, then understand that the value of any of these things is what you're willing to pay for it. And none of these things are, well, very few of these things are particularly rare. The first sewing machine that I specifically sought out was the Fof 260. And I paid a lot of money for the one that I bought. I paid $150 for it broken and paid another $150 to get it working again. And today I think it's probably worth 150 bucks. And I've seen dozens of them over the years. Um, I have enjoyed using that machine when I've used it. I really don't use it anymore. And there are other machines that cost me a lot less that work basically as well. And I've moved on to a kind of sewing that really requires walking foot machines most of the time anyway. So, I mean, I, I could have saved that $300. My Singer 237 that I paid $20 for is really the, the domestic machine that I use the most anyway these days. So my point being, if you decide, oh, I've, I've got to have a Singer 201-2, uh, you know, if you, the first one you see is $300, just hold on, there will be more out there and you don't need to overspend on something that they made millions of, uh, especially if it's not any better than one that you can find for 25 or 50 bucks. I think if I were gonna condense this into advice for a person who is shopping for a used sewing machine, I would say if you're buying a vintage domestic machine, and by that I usually mean from around 1970 and before, there are machines that were built after 1970 that are fine machines, but the farther away from the 70s you get, the more plastic and the more complicated things tend to get. I, I think if you're talking about, you know, 1950s, 1960s domestic sewing machine, you know, you probably want to pay, pay 25, 30 bucks unless it's something that you know is particularly special. If you're looking for an industrial machine, my personal opinion is just stick with walking foot machines. And if you're going to buy a walking foot industrial machine, you know, you might get one under $500. Um, my console 206 RB1 was 450, but it was ridden hard and put away wet, needed a couple of things done to it to get it to work right, but now it works fantastic. I think six to $800 is probably a good median range for a well-working industrial walking foot sewing machine. If you're looking at something like a Bernina 930, then you're gonna pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars or, you know, they're, they're awesome machines, but they're very high priced in my opinion. But so something like that, you, you really need to know that there's a reason why you want that particular machine that justifies the cost of it. But I'm speaking more to the, the people who, you know, email me and like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to buy this machine. Is this a good deal? If you don't have a really specific reason for buying that particular machine and you know a lot about it already, then you probably shouldn't be paying a lot of money for it. Anyway, I hope you found that helpful. I'd love to know what you think. What did I forget or get wrong? Or do you have uh, a different method for pricing things that maybe I didn't think about? Post in the comments section below. You can also post questions if you have them. If you uh, click the like button, that really helps. If you click the dislike button, well, do that, but also tell me why so I can try to do better. If you're not already, I'd love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.